Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. Today we're going to be taking a look at something quite unique and bizarre, which some of you may have seen before, but stick around, I promise you. You're going to see something in this video that practically no one has seen for 30 odd years. Now, I'm sure most of you watching this are familiar with Space Quest 1, The Serian Encounter. This is the DOS version for IBM PCs and compatibles. It's the one that's currently sold today on GOG and Steam. This is the 16-color EGA version with PC speaker sound, which is probably how most of us played it back in the day. Space Quest 1 came out in 1986, and at the time, there were a myriad of different home computer systems that Sierra ported their games to. There was the Atari ST, which added some rudimentary mouse control. There was the Commodore Amiga, which, despite its superior color depth of 32 colors, is just piss poor in every regard. And there's the even worse version for the Apple IIc, which truly is a test of patience in every respect. And then there's the frankly astonishing Apple II GS version, which not only looks stunning, but also had a full 16 voice soundtrack and digital sound effects. It is not now. It is not now. I'll be taking a look at those versions in due time, but the version we're here to talk about today is by far the most bizarre. This is the version for the Apple Macintosh, and right off the bat, you may notice that this version looks very different than any of the other versions. This one has a whole goddamn point-and-click interface. Now, granted, it's a terrible one, and you're better off just playing the game with the keyboard, but props to them for giving it a shot, at least. Okay, this is a lot to take in at first glance, so let's just go over it step by step. Along the top, you have these drop-down menus. The file menu is just your standard save, load, and restart, and also a revert button, which just reloads the last save game you made. The edit menu is just your standard word processing type edit menu. You've got copy, paste, undo, etc. And this is only used for the parser input text box. I know, I know, it'd be fun if undo meant undoing whatever action you just did in game, but no, that's not how that works. In the special menu, we have things such as controlling the game's animation speed and the sound volume. We can hide the top menu for reasons I'm not entirely clear on. The menu is still accessible, but now it's just a blank empty void up there. And then there's this really neat function that isn't in any of the other versions, but I kind of wish it was, a redisplay message function. This one pops up the last text box you saw just in case you accidentally pressed enter or clicked the mouse before you had a chance to read it, which is pretty useful actually. Much less useful is the direction menu. This is so absolutely useless, it's hilarious. This menu lets you control Roger's walking direction. You just pick one and off he scoots. If you want him to stop, you go back to the menu and select stop. What the fuck? I don't even know why this is in here. It certainly doesn't make controlling Roger any easier. I mean, look, 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 look how much I'm struggling just to get his ass back into the broom closet. Jesus. But now we come to the really interesting bits. The last two menus are verbs and the slightly ominous do it. Verbs has a list of predefined verbs that you can select like look, get, open, push, insert, eat, etc. Now you'd think once you click on look, for instance, that you could just click on whatever you wanted to look at. No, sorry. This just brings up the parser box and then has you type in whatever it is you want to look at. So really, this is just a shortcut in case you're too lazy to write the word look before anything else. I can't really say this is a massive time saver in any way, but it is an interesting concept. Now, you may be wondering what other at the bottom does. It just brings up the blank parser input box which would have appeared anyway the moment you started typing something. So yeah, round of applause for extraneous UI elements. Now, do it is a little more useful, or at least it could have been. It's a short list of predefined commands such as look at room, look at panel, look at door, etc. Stuff that you need to do often in this game. Although curiously, not the command that you end up using most often, which is push the button. And my god, there are a lot of puzzles in Space Quest that can be solved just by pushing a button. Anyway, at the bottom of this menu is open the door, which is just laughable given that all doors in this game open on their own whenever you get close to them. Moving over to the left of the screen, we have menus, which just hides the top menu again. The feature that was so pointless, it was worth including twice. But then you have status, which is actually a really neat window that shows you your current points, your inventory, and a toggle for sound on and off. Now, I'm not carrying anything right now, but if we run over and pick up this dude's key card, there we go, and then have a look in our inventory, the look at key card description will now show up under the list. 
I think this inventory slash status window is actually pretty neat. But I hope you're ready for some disappointments though, because the next button, input, just brings up the parser input box again. <laughs> this box appears on its own whenever you start typing something, so I don't know what kind of weirdo you'd have to be to actually point to this button with the mouse, click it with your mouse button, and then move your hands over to the keyboard to type in what it is you want to do, and then back to the mouse and point to the button the next time you want to do something. You see what I mean? Now, look gives you the general room description, and that's actually somewhat useful, I guess, if you're playing this game with the mouse at all. Again, I don't really recommend that you actually do play with the mouse at all, because it really just makes the game that much harder, but I guess it could be a fun speedrun challenge or something, I don't know. The stop button, which is labeled pause, does neither of those things. It just brings up a text window, which I guess does technically pause the game, so okay, whatever. So that's Space Quest 1, the point and click game. Now, you may be wondering why it's all in black and white. Didn't the Macintosh support colors? And yes, yes it did. And yes, Space Quest 1, as well as all the other Sierra AGI games that came out for the Macintosh, did support both monochrome and 16 color modes. The trouble is, if you try to run this game in 16 colors on an emulator, you'll be rewarded with this unholy garbled mess of pixel vomit. I tried three different emulators and a dizzying combination of processors, ROMs, and Mac OS versions. They all use what's known in the Mac world as 32-bit quick draw. Now, I'm not a Mac guy myself, so I'm not exactly sure what quick draw does, but as far as I understand it, it's the thingamajig inside the Mac that actually draws shit on the screen. Now, early Macs used a 24-bit version of quick draw, and this is what the Sierra's AGI games expect to find. But if you run these games on a Mac that has 32-bit quick draw, you get this garbage mess. And for the longest time, it seemed like the only way you were ever going to see these games in 16 colors on a Mac is if you had the actual hardware itself, like an actual Mac with the actual game and the actual game discs. And fuck that. Unless Iron Brew steps in and starts sponsoring my videos, I'm not about to hop on eBay and lay down a gazillion bucket so it's just to buy a vintage Mac and get all this shit up and running just so I can capture a few minutes for a YouTube video. But lo and behold, Last year, a dude contacted me on the SQH Discord and told me that him and his team were in fact working on a special Mac emulator that uses the 16-bit quick draw renderer. And while that emulator is still under development and not quite ready for public consumption yet, he did let me have a go at an experimental build. So brace yourselves, I'm about to show you some shit that hasn't been seen since the late 80s. Here it is. Space Quest 1, running on the Apple Macintosh in full 16-color glory. And as you can see, the UI has slightly shifted around it. I'm not exactly sure why, but it is the same weird-ass pseudo-pointy-clicky interface of the black and white version. Well, kind of. I think this might actually be a later version of the Mac version, because in addition to the verbs drop-down, we now have two extra menu options, modifier and noun. This essentially lets you construct sentences using just your mouse. Verb is, again, your standard look, get, open, push, etc. The modifier is the middle bit of the sentence. Do you want to look at something, or perhaps through it, or into it, or even inside it? Ugh. And the noun is the object you want to do this to. Now, quite disappointingly, these nouns aren't contextual to the scene you're in, which means they don't actually change depending on what's currently available to you where you are in the game. This is a predefined list of objects that whoever programmed this thought you might use most often. Man, droid, door, ship, button, and panel. And while it is true that all of these things exist in the game, man perhaps being a bit of a stretch given that any humans you meet in the game are dead, and the rest are just creepy aliens, it is still quite a short list. And infuriatingly, actually getting inside any of the ships in the game is a pain in the ass because there's no enter or go inside verb in the verbs menu. The closest you'll get is climb ship, which sounds unintentionally hilarious and only works with the Arcadas escape pod and the escape pod on the Deltor at the end of the game. Anyway, as I said, this is an experimental build of the emulator, so it has a few caveats. First of all, there's no sound. And second, in what I really think is a deep twisted irony, it only runs on Mac computers at the moment. So you'll have to forgive the slightly crappy capture quality. This is the best I could do with my wife's Mac laptop using QuickTime to capture the footage. 
And I actually played through the entire game with my friend Decaf Jedi. So if you want to have a look at the full game in all its 16 color glory, accompanied by the sort of commentary, only two aging men who spent the majority of their life playing too much Space Quest, you should see a link to that video on your screen right about now. Well, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed this astounding look at a very early prototypical point and click interface for a game that was absolutely not well suited for it, which barely works as intended and makes the game an absolute chore to play. But God damn it, you gotta admire the effort that went into this. I'm the Space Quest Historian. Until next time, I'll see you around the Chrono Street. Bye.